Hey, it's Chris and Brian here from Resolve Technology. And today, Chris wants to talk about some recent tickets he's gotten on Outlook and how to use shared mailboxes and use them in the right way. And Chris, why don't you take it away with our ticket talk today? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sign into Outlook. This, what Brian's talking about here is mostly what, like you're in an environment where you're managing like multiple mailboxes, whether it's shared, whether it's a user mailbox, say your customer service and you have three different, there's two other companies that you're, it's all one big bubble, but there's three different corporations it falls under or whatever they are. And you got to manage, say it's set up where you have three mailboxes. So you have customer service at this domain, at that domain, etc. Like um, sister companies. Yes. Like so if you want to look in Outlook here, so this is just my demo environment, but I have this mailbox DMARC. Maybe this, this is called customer service, right? And I need to send email as DMARC from time to time, not direct, not by Christopher at CK here. I go to compose a new message. I go to options, the three dots from field. Once you show that from field, see, I can go other email and choose that other I'm using the wrong name. Now it's sending from that. And then I have it in my little drop down. So if I go to compose a new message, it should still, yeah, it carried over. But there's another thing you might run into is you have to go to. So let's stop for a second. Let people yep. take a breath. So Chris, in his example, it's DMARC. That could be, like you said, a customer service mailbox. It could be a more common one that we see a lot is accounts payable mailbox, accounts receivable mailbox, or a generic accounting mailbox. And they want to, there's multiple people that need to get into that mailbox and they need to both send and receive from that mailbox. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Yeah. No. So yeah, you now that we have that, another thing to keep in mind, if you're sending a lot of emails and you're not always sending them from your direct account there, I'd always go in here and check, but I forget where it is now. Option. So you go to file, option, the mail tab, and then we're going to look for the mail. It's just called mail in here. Right here. It's off by default, but you don't, if you're sending from multiple mailboxes, you probably don't want this on, which is probably why they left it off by default, but always use the default account when composing new messages. So so if I don't want this Christopher at CK technology to always to always be the from address, then I do not want this. I don't want this setting checked, which it should be off by default in the classic outlook. OK, that's a good one. Another thing to keep in mind here, I'm just bringing it up on my other screen, is if we go to the admin center, I just want to mention this. So if we go under whether it's a shared mailbox, a user mailbox, if I come in here and click edit, I have multiple domains here. Say there was also Resolve Tech in here, or ResolveTech.com, Resolve Tech LLC. We had three domains. I could do DMARC at the other domain. It already added it by default, but essentially know that this aliases section here. We could just have one mailbox, customer service at the primary company.com, and then have the sister company's domain's customer service address as an alias. They can send that email address you want is just an alias now, but it's still being sent and directed to a mailbox on your tenant. Yeah, it, to one location. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Now, the question we usually get in that situation is well, I like to separate them. That's where creating, what is it, the rules, Brian, and Outlook? Yeah, you can create the rules in Outlook, individual rules that you're talking about doing rules to move emails to certain yes. folders. Yeah. yeah, they could just have a folder for each company, right? And then redirect vendors here, there. That's the way you can go. Another thing you can keep in mind is if it's a user mailbox, say for whatever reason, it's not a shared mailbox, you need access to a user mailbox. It's important that if I come in here, I'll just go under my account. We don't have too many accounts in here. The mail tab for the user in question, it's confusing, but even Brian and I joke about this because I forgot once to send on behalf of permissions. If you want to use that send as thing I was mentioning earlier, send on behalf, where you'd go to the from field and punch in the email address who you're sending on behalf of. You need read, send as, and send on behalf of. You need both of these. Usually, if a manager wants access to, say, me, say Brian wants access to my mailbox, I'd put them on all three. So you can read it, you can send as using that email address. So that way it doesn't use just your email address. It can use that accounts payable, DMARC, whatever customer service email address and by default i don't think that the from field's not showing you'll have to go into options like we showed earlier and choose the from field and you'd have to manually type in the email of the user so there is some work 
that you got to do to get that to work. So it's not just set it and then you can do it. Then the, the user needs to, from Outlook, go into the, do a new email, go to options, choose this, hit from, and then other email. And then maybe I wanted to say I wanted to send this Brian. Yeah. You'd have to put it in there and then it, it should just stay unless you go yeah. to a new computer. Yeah. All right, Chris. We'll leave it there. Hey, thanks a lot for showing us that. All right. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye.